Rouse's Markets is noted best grocery store in New Orleans, best grocery store in Baton Rouge, Mississippi, Gulf Coast, Thibodeau, Homa, Hammond, Lake Charles, Mobile, year after year. Thank you for choosing us best grocery store on the Gulf Coast. Number one. Thank you. Thank you. The number one grocery store. In Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. A million customers a week can't be wrong. Welcome to Rouse's. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Deanne Criswell, and I'm the FEMA Administrator and Governor. Thank you for letting me join you today um, as we assess some of the, the impacts from Hurricane Francine. Um, what we've seen here in Terrebonne Parish is really the result of a lot of investment from the local community and the state of Louisiana in resiliency, which has really minimized the impact that we probably could have seen from this storm. Although we know that there's still people that have been impacted, and that's part of what we're doing here today is to really understand the impacts to the community. We also know that this community is still recovering from Hurricane Ida, and some of those uh, damages that they experienced then are really causing additional um, problems today. And so we're going to continue to work closely with the governor, with the parish leaders here to help um, through the original recovery process, but also better understand what we can do today and from this storm to help stabilize the community in the event that we have another hurricane, because it's still very well, not early, but it's the middle and the peak of the hurricane season. And we know that the potential for another hurricane um, is likely out there. And so I just wanna say thank you to the community here for sharing with me some of the concerns that they've had and the things that we can work on as an agency to help this community better recover, but also to celebrate all of the work and the investment that they have made in resilience to make this community stronger and to protect its people. It's really, really remarkable. So Governor, with that alternative to well, look, I, to echo I, what the administrator said, well, well, first, let me recognize how much we appreciate the administrator being here. I think it's, it speaks volumes um, uh, for how, how much they understand the vital infrastructure that Louisiana has along its coast and what the impact of those hurricanes are. Uh, you know, I would have loved to get through this hurricane season without any storms. And as she said earlier, we're really kind of at the peak of hurricane season as well. I think, again, what this storm shows us is gives us an opportunity to have FEMA come down here and see where there are some deficiencies in, um, in the process, how, where we can fix that particular bureaucracy, where we have some weak links, and then again, to get the help needed for those people who were impacted by this storm as well. So it, to me, it's kind of like an opportunity to maybe hit a triple rather than a single here. Uh, we're hoping to take some lessons learned. We had a great meeting in there. Um, again, uh, you know, this area has consistently stood up time and time again uh, from one storm after another. But to echo what she said, I think it's important that we look back and we understand where we are today and where we came from. This would be a much different place had we not invested the amount of money that we have invested in this area, had CIPRA and the Corps and the federal government and the taxpayers right here in, 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 in Terrebonne and in the neighboring parishes as well, not invested in understanding the need to have levy protection and hurricane protection in this area. We will continue to be committed to making sure that we can speed those projects up. You know, it's funny, just a couple of months ago, we were breaking ground on a new infrastructure right at the Homa Navigational Canal. I was speaking to the administrator about those projects as well. And so, again, we'll be working with the local officials to make sure that those affected by this storm get the resources necessary to fully recover. With that, I'd like to give Senator Kennedy an opportunity to say a few things. Thank you, Governor, um, and thanks for your leadership. Look, number one, I am, I'm so grateful to our administrator for being here. Um, I, I'm just so grateful. And I, I, I refer to her as Madam Secretary because FEMA, whether everyone in America understands it or not, Every day FEMA touches their lives, and it ought to be a secretary level position, cabinet level position. So she's Madam Secretary to me. Uh, number two, look, there's always something to be grateful for, but that's cold comfort if you had damage. I, I, I know some of, some of our people had damage, whether it was water or wind or whatever. I don't want you to worry about Congress. Uh, Congressman Graves is here. We're, we'll get you the money. 
we're, we're, we'll, Louisiana will get its fair share. We will, we will chase our colleagues like they stole Christmas until we get our fair share, and I don't want you to worry about that. Number three, the governor and, and, and our administrator made a really good point. We were talking about it inside here. Uh, imagine, and I'm not discounting the damage, but imagine what would have happened if we, the American taxpayer and the Terrebonne taxpayer and the Lafouche taxpayer and Louisiana taxpayers had not invested in, in levy protection, in protecting our grid, just imagine. I mean, the damages would be billions and billions and billions of dollars. And the, the thing that we're talking about, the governor brought this up, and he, it, it, was, it was very smart, and Congressman Graves is here somewhere. We were talking about it with, with the, uh, the secretary. Uh, Louisianians need to get some credit for that in our flood insurance program. We can't afford it. Flood insurance doesn't do any good. Insurance doesn't do any good if you can't buy it. And, and I just don't think, I know where the, the secretary's heart is, I do, and it's in the right place. But we've, we've got to get credit for what the, the dollars we've already invested, and the governor's going to do an inventory of this, and I just think it's a brilliant idea, and I thank him for it. And he's done a hell of a job. How do you use the success that Terrebonne saw here from this storm to help leverage some additional federal help? And what can you do to, to help the people here to continue this, the work that needs to be done? We had we saw one of the levees had water come right up to the top, so clearly it needs to be higher, especially uh, to prepare for 100 years ago. Look, I think, I think again, the conversations that we're having today, I think this storm brings those conversations to bear here today. I think the great work that our congressional delegation, having Senator Kennedy here leading at, uh, are going to help us get there. Uh, again, I th let me echo what Senator Kennedy said. I think he's right. I mean, we should be able to go back and look at the piles of storms that have piled up on top of us and the amount of money that we've inf invested in and, and the improvements that we made, and we should get credit for that. Uh, and we want to work harder for that. We'll have a discussion on trying to close the gaps uh, in the levee system here in Terrebonne. I mean, we saw some houses flood in St. Charles Parish. We haven't gotten there yet. But again, that's an, an area under which Shipper has a project, and if we can just get the project done and, and shovel ready and, and the permits made, and we made that uh, plea to the Corps during the UCG meeting. And, and look, I think they're doing a good job as well. We just have to lean into them and make them understand that the quicker we get these projects done, the more times that we save the federal government money, the less she has to come down here. Not that we don't like her being down here. But again, it protects property and it protects lives as well. Can I say, say something? Well, you make a, a good point, and maybe that levy needs to be higher. I'm sorry. You make a good point, and maybe that levy, levy does need to be higher. But my point is, what if there hadn't been a levy there at all? And that levy didn't just fall from heaven. We thank heaven for it. But taxpayers pay for that levy. And we need to get some credit for that in our flood insurance. That's all we're saying. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not fussing at our, at our, our secretary here. I know where her heart is. But to some extent, her hands are tied. But there are things we can do to try to get those prices down. If Governor Landry, you have Hurricane Rita, we had 12,000 homes flood. Hurricane Ida, we had three. Yeah. I'm sort of curious where we are now because we taxed ourselves to Terrebonne Parish. It seems to be working. But we're a great example. And I'm scared people are leaving Terrebonne. They're going to see Archie and everybody else. And Jason wants to keep them here. So. Yeah, we're going to work on it. I think it's zero. Or I think right? I, I think it's zero. Yeah, go ahead. Governor Landry, it's Aubrey at WDSU. Thank you for being here today. Uh, what sort of um, state assistance, federal assistance, do you anticipate for flood victims or or hurricane victims coming? Look, we have we have put a request into the White House uh, this morning. Uh, the FEMA administrator knows about that particular request. We have asked for um, the relief that we need in this particular area. We will await uh, that declaration. Uh, we, have, we, we, we did, I wanna make sure y'all understand, we were able to get a pre-landfall declaration, which was huge, that helped us pre-position a number of those particular assets. And as we get that declarations, as those declarations come to us, we'll be putting that information out to y'all as well. Governor, you talked about how resilient the people around in this neighborhood neighboring place is, but what do you want them to say when they just didn't go to flood for the last hurricane, now they are flooding again, are they have damage when it comes 
Yeah, look, again, again, here's what I'll tell you. We are committed. Uh, I think we, we were, when I was Attorney General, I think the Attorney General's here as well. She's been, she's been litigating, she is litigating uh, the, uh, the FEMA flood uh, 2.0 um, litigation. We have worked, this year, uh, we passed over 26 measures uh, that the insurance company said were necessary in, in order for us to lower our insurance premiums here. A big part of that package were for property owners. Um, this storm, of course, uh, is going to bring some dynamics to that. And, of course, we, we mentioned that to the FEMA uh, secretary as well. Uh, and But, we're again, um, we are a resilient people. Uh, those storms have been – look, I said this a long time. This state was built by people way before there was a FEMA. Hell, it was way before there was a federal government, before any of that. And they have continued to work to make this place better. I think that what we see today is part of those, the, the fruits of that particular labor, is part of that resiliency. Just what Martin said, to think about that 11,000 homes flooded at one time and today we're at zero. Now again, like Senator Kennedy said, uh, there are people out there that are hurting and that's why she's here. And, that, and we're, gonna, we're gonna make the means necessary to get those people the relief that they need. How, how many cars are you approving for Sherbourne and LaBouche? Uh, well, as many as they want. How about that? Um, and, I, and I'll tell you that our, um, our GOSEP director, we've made some changes uh, in getting those pods in place. Uh, we believe that, that, that we're going to speed the process up by days. I mean, before it would take five or six days before pods were fully in place. Today, we believe we can get them in 24 and 48 hours. Uh, in, in fact, they should be. I don't know where. Here, sir. There he is. <laughs> yes. You, Jacques, you want to sure, talk to that? In the, in the early stages of the transition, the governor kind of asked us to look at how we could free up the National Guard to do more critical missions. So we, we developed the process and we actually put it out for bid to the private sector. It's gone through that process and we believe that that'll expedite our pods moving into the communities by as much as three to four days. So we anticipate right now we have requests from, from Terrebonne and St. Mary and and St. James, and I believe LaFouche just pulled theirs back. We had uh, some coming here, but we're gonna have the pods operational here tomorrow at noon. So if you think about what that is, having been through Ida with the city of Thibodeau, I know how important those pods are. And now a day later, the pods are gonna get here and those people that don't have power now get the valuable commodities of food and ice. It's a survival lifeline. So we're extremely proud about it, and uh, we're going to make it work. We're never going to stop and just tell everyone, this is my hometown, my home area. Stay strong, and we will always have you back. As we went through the flyover, and we continue to fly, I'm really interested in flying a lot closer uh, towards the coast and seeing some of the, um, the levees that held, right, and where there may be weaknesses in them so that we can point those out uh, for, for repair. But I, I can tell you I'm um, – I feel a lot better today, again, um, than I did when the storm was bearing on us. Um, I think that, 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 again, while there are people out there, we need to get resources too. Uh, that number of people who need those resources is probably not as great as it could have been. And I'm thankful for that as well. I'm, I'm thankful for the amount of people in this state, in this country that have prayed for Louisiana. I think that God has given us just as much as we can handle, um, and, uh, and we intend to handle it. All right. Thank you all so very much. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. So, Governor, the flyover, and of course we were talking, I guess my, my biggest question to you would be, in Rita we had 12,000 homes flood, in Ida we had three, I think you just said we had zero. Does this send a clear message to, to FEMA, I know they're here, but most importantly the insurance companies, do they finally see that, hey, 
This area has been taxing themselves, been building, been doing things on their own. Is there a chance the insurance companies themselves will see this and go, we got to help? Well, that's what I'm hoping. And, you know, initially, initially, I think that the, the flyover showed me that I don't know that we are going to have nearly the number of blue tarps that we needed uh, in prior storms. Uh, I think that shows that the resiliency of the construction that we've already been in place. However, we also have to recognize that uh, many people out there that are still waiting on insurance companies to pay them so that they can fix that property. And now that property has been damaged again. So I think the message is twofold to the insurance companies that, listen, this area, if you give us the money that's rightfully paid in the premiums that we've given you, right? If you return those to us based upon the policies that you're required to do, then we can use that money in a way that's going to protect that property and future investments for them as well. And, they should, and that should be reflected in the premiums. There's one follow-up on that. You hit, you hit the nail on the head. People are still rebuilding since Ida. They have not received full compensation. They got hit again in this storm. So how do they handle it? They, it it puts so much stress on people and terrible and that we hear a lot of talk of people moving. How do we get them back? Well, again, that's the discussions that we had with the FEMA administrator um, in trying to work to make sure that we get that the federal money that seems to be hung up in Washington uh, flowing again. Right. Um, and how we can we can maybe use this as an opportunity uh, rather than, than 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 an unfortunate circumstance. And so those are the discussions that we're having. And I'll tell you, look, I got to tell you, having Senator Kennedy at the table with us while we're having those discussions is extremely important. Uh, we're hoping that uh, I believe we're going to have Congressman Steve Scalise uh, in the state tomorrow and some of the other congressional. We had Congressman Graves with us in this meeting as well. But again, it's important for them to understand that when you don't live up to your obligations, then our people suffer even more. And so those are the things that we're going to concentrate on. Does she leave here today saying, all right, Tara Bowen has spent a lot of their own money. They've taxed themselves. And does it give her a little boost of confidence because we've done that? Well, how do you feel? What was her reaction today? You know, I feel anytime you sit across the table from somebody and have a conversation, you know, you, you, get, you have that human element. That's what I talked about in there. When we talk about how much much money this has saved and everything that's done, you know, how much we're not going to have to spend. But the conversation I have is, can you put a price on culture? Can you put a price on quality of life? Because those two things, you know, if the people that have lived there entire live here our entire life. And I think we have a great community. We would help anybody here. You come in here to our parish, we're going to treat you like we're family. We're going to treat you like we've been knowing each other for 20 years. And you don't get that everywhere. And, and just that lose that, lose that, lose that sense of, of just pride. And again, a community that don't rely on government, but at a certain point when you keep getting kicked and you keep getting back up, you know, even the best person will get knocked down and, and have trouble getting back up. So, you know, again, it's just us coming together, being able to look each other in the eye, shake each other's hands and say, and that's what I told them. We want to work with you. You know, I don't, I don't want to yell at you. I don't have, you know, I know it's frustrating. I, I think it's impressive just for her to be in the room, like just to step in the room and know you're going to get a hard time based on decisions that other people have made that have put us here. Then I look at and say, we're going to have a conversation. Let me give you information. Now maybe you can make an informed decision or maybe the governor or maybe somebody else can take this information. And again, when I finish up the meeting, I said the little facts of 11,000 homes flooded, 11 homes flooded, zero homes flooded. I want somebody to fight me on that because that's the conversation. You just can't pass that up. You could say we spent the money, it protected homes, and we could be the standard of what everybody else goes off of. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. FEMA needs to turn their entire model around. They need to reward the right type of behavior like we've seen here. They need to address the needs that we have here. We need to focus on improved resiliency. We need to focus on fixing this absurd, unaffordable insurance situation. Those are the things that we need to really be focusing on right now. Just fun. The insurance companies who took so long to reimburse people, 
since Ida. And I know, because I'm one of them. I happen to be a reporter, but I'm one of them. There's so many more. Now, they have more damage to the same structures that they were waiting to get reimbursed on. Does this give the insurance companies an in, or does it give them an out? Well, look, those companies need to be held accountable, period. They do. They need to be held accountable. They need to make sure that they make the payments that are due to these to these citizens. Um, bottom line is that it does make things more complicated because, as you know, you might have had company A that funded that was your insurance provider for Ida. You might have company B that's your insurance provider for Francine. So they might start fighting over each other about were damages attributable to this storm or that one. The head of FEMA was in the house. She got to ride on the choppers, got to see firsthand what a community, a an area, a culture gets to do to protect himself. Lafouche did it first. Terrible attacks themselves. They came by after. So much has been done. Does she get the message of what she saw today as a negative or a positive in respect? What I mean, does she see it and go, well, they, they got it taken care of, or these people help themselves, now we can help them. You know, Lauren, this is, I think, her fifth trip down here. She came down several times uh, after Hurricane Ida. And I think, uh, I agree with Ken Senator Kennedy, I think her heart's truly in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's caught up by some of the bureaucratic red tapes. So a lot of the conversations we had with her today with the governor uh, before we came out for the press conference was really centered around the credit and how do we give credit to ourselves for the billions of dollars that we've put into hurricane protection, flood protection, both in Lafourche and Terrebonne. And if we're going to have conversations about things like risk rating 2.0 uh, and making it unaffordable for a lot of our residents here in Lafourche and Terrebonne, we have to figure out how to give ourselves credit for that because look if we wouldn't have taxed ourselves and put that billions of dollars worth into the into the marshlands and into our pump stations they'd be shelling out two times that to try to fix it so i think she's finally starting to get the message i think she's finally starting to see we had some great conversations with her and president Bajra after about setting up a true local stakeholder committee and how it relates to some of these federal policies that we're doing and how do we get involved in that so i'm really going to hold her to task uh, we're headed up to fema Den uh, region six and denton next week to talk about our continued efforts to fight the fema flood maps and how that pertains to restraining 2.0 so we're going to continue to have those discussions with her and hopefully it pays off in the long run Rouse's Markets is noted best grocery store in New Orleans, best grocery store in Baton Rouge, Mississippi, Gulf Coast, Thibodeau, Homa, Hammond, Lake Charles, Mobile, year after year. Thank you for choosing us best grocery store on the Gulf Coast. Number one. Thank you. Thank you. The number one grocery store. In Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. A million customers a week can't be wrong. Welcome to Rouse's.